what's good, y'all? This is another episode of Cinematic Lighting Techniques. I am your host, Cal Visuals. Let's do the damn thing. Top three favorite lighting setups for cinematic and dramatic interviews. Let's dive in. What? <laughs> So what we're going to do here, guys, is we're going to jump into lighting setup one. This is one of my favorite um, cinematic and dramatic interview looks here. Uh, very simple and easy setup. Um, so first and foremost, we're going to grab C-stand here, um, and we're going to go ahead and set up our key light. Excuse me there, Hannah. Shout out to um, our talent and Shay behind the camera as well for helping out here. Huge thanks to them. Okay. All right, so again, what we're setting up right now is the key light. Um, and so we're gonna set it up high because we want nice motivating light striking. Ooh. Take this right here. This is going to be our fill. All right, striking. Nice, okay. We've got full daylight going on here. I'm gonna add just a little bit of tungsten into there just to warm it up a little bit. All right, here we go. Homemade diffusion right here, a t-shirt. Um, so everything I'm showing you guys with these videos, um, you know, I'm not, bringing out five C stands, I'm not bringing out scrims or silk or duvetyn um, or flags, any of that jazz. Uh, I'm not trying to showcase you guys how to do something on like an $8,000 budget, but how you can actually do it um, practically um, and do it with things just around your house or utilizing very, very minimal budget. So this right here, again, we're just throwing on to act as a little bit more diffusion. Pretty great right there, guys. Only thing I would maybe note is kind of just if you wanna talk or look at doing different elements. So again, if, if you're kind of looking at our shot here and seeing that, um, it's got a really nice good setup, um, very clean, uh, sleek image. Um, the only thing that one might kind of care about is, is shadow drop-offs. Um, so if I was gonna take this set a bit further, I might remove some of the items um, from the background just to kind of eliminate those shadows. Another thing people might want to do, um, aside from all the, the junk hanging out in the window there is, again, people might not like that window. Um, so let's go ahead and kind of take that out. Uh, let's get rid of this natural light that's coming in and kind of do a negative fill, if you will. So right now, the uh, window well, was, the window was acting um, as a form of natural light, um, practical light, and light that's helping separate our subject from the background. Um, so again, it's just kind of helping create that space. And so we can let a little bit of light in if we want, but I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this close. Um, and I personally would like to use just uh, the laptop. Um, so if you can go ahead and show her real quick for me, Shay. Uh, so, Doing, seeing this scene right here, I personally would like to use the laptop uh, as my uh, separator here. So this is separating my subject from the background, putting her more properly in the foreground, uh, just creating that depth. What I really like about using something like this, or again, like a practical lamp, um, is that, again, it's practical, okay? So it's natural to the human eye. It doesn't deceive us, or we don't go, oh, wait, what? There's a giant light there. I'm going to grab this little sheet right here. I uh, really love using this guy. This is honeycomb grid. <laughs> um, so what this does is it help, It essentially helps us shape the light further. Um, so as you can see here, if you're looking through our image right now, we're getting a whole lot of spill. The light is going literally everywhere, all over the walls. Um, this is helping diffuse it and then 
keep it kind of projected more this direction. But again, it's spilling out. Uh, Shay, if you can kind of show up here on the ceiling. So we're seeing it all over the ceiling. If you can show by your feet, Shay, we're seeing it on the floor by his feet. We're literally filling up um, nearly this entire room with all the light spilling out. So this is gonna help us really shape it and make it more directionally um, pointed at Hannah. So it's just gonna, you know, enhance our look again. It's gonna make it more captivating, more cinematic. So Shay, if you wanna show by your feet and show on the ceiling and everything, as you can see now, uh, we're getting much more uh, controlled light. We're shaping the light. I personally wanna just hop down here and see it really quick myself. Beautiful, yeah, so we've got a really, really nice uh, cinematic and dramatic look. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and move things around, switch up the set and design, uh, and go ahead and do my cinematic look number two. All right, y'all, so we're jumping into cinematic lighting setup number two uh, for interviews, getting a nice dramatic interview. Um, this shot here, we are going to utilize a practical light um, through a lamp here. We're also going to use uh, the 120D again, and we're going to use this for an overhead look. I love using an overhead look. It gives a very, very dramatic, edgy feeling. Um, the big thing with overhead shots you wanna be sure of is you wanna make sure that you have some diffusion with them. Um, overhead with very hard light is gonna give us terrible raccoon eyes. It's equivalent to shooting outside in high noon. Um, no one wants to do it. You're getting really, really harsh, dark shadows, um, and it just doesn't look appealing. Um, so again, we wanna make sure to have soft light there. Um, additionally, what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'll show you guys an option of setting up a backlight to again separate uh, our subject Hannah here from the foreground, as well as I'm gonna show you an option of just kind of leaving it as is or not utilizing anything in kind of the background to kind of add that effect, if you will. Um, so let's go ahead and get things set up. First and foremost, striking. We're gonna get that top light going. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn over here and see how that's working. So as you can see right now, we are extremely bright. So I'm gonna crank down that ISO now. Probably go even lower actually. Right about there, that looks good. So we're about uh, ISO 3200, or uh, <laughs> three, uh, 320 right now, not 3200. Striking. So now we got the nice practical. So now we've got a nice warm light as well. Um, and so this warm light is gonna act as our fill here. So this is gonna fill the shadow side a little bit. Again, it's gonna add more warm um, ambience and uh, ambiance to the room. It's gonna help set our mood and overall setting for this piece. Um, so let's go ahead and check out the image now. Looks really good, guys. I'm, I'm really liking it here. I'm actually gonna turn down the ISO a little more. Awesome, so we're looking really, really good. Lastly, um, Shay, if I can have that light from you. Thank you, sir. So this right here this is another Aperture product. This is the Aperture ALM9. This right here is, again, just another simple, easy light. Um, this right here is a little diffusion piece. So I've got that right there. Actually, real quick, I'm gonna hop over here to my kit. This comes with the kit as well. Um, so I'm gonna add this little gel right here for it. Again, just to fit our scene more, um, cause we're going for a warm, um, warm vibe here. And it's all about the vibe, baby. <laughs> um, so we're gonna throw this in the vac, just like that. Let's see if we can get it to stand. There we go. Very, very subtle and simple, but it just adds a little bit of lighting there in the back to separator. Again, we can remove that light and you guys can see the difference there. So the light's gone, we can see the difference. Then another option here, this is again, just another simple LED tube light I have. We'll give it a little more. This right here is a fun little effect. Obviously this doesn't go quite with the vibe. Um, so we're just gonna give it a little bit of power. So what I would do, obviously I'm not gonna be able to get this locked in right now, but I would add this in here um, just so we can get a little bit more Again, to fit that vibe, warm orange feeling, 
and again to help separate her from the background. Hey, it's actually pretty good. Right. Like, like what you got going on there. <laughs> All right, you guys, um, that's it. That's uh, lighting setup number two, how to do a nice cinematic dramatic look here um, for an interview. Again, these are all being shot straight on just so I can give you more of the overall image and look. So I'm shooting it straight on and wide. We're shooting it at about 28 mm. Um, just because I wanna show you the whole kind of setting and space. Obviously, you could have a second B cam coming in. And what I would suggest is always shooting shadow side. It's gonna give more of a dramatic look. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and jump into look number three. This is definitely one of my favorites. Um, and this is gonna be for a extremely dark look. All right, y'all, so we're going into lighting setup number three. Again, this is for a very, very dramatic, edgy look here. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to start with our top-down look. Stop the fan there, make sure we don't get anything hit. I'm going to pull these both out here. Okay. And I'm gonna move this. Striking. Top down light setup. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Obviously I'm gonna bring the Right, so down about 400 right there. I like that, that looks good, looks clean. Um, we got a slight issue here. Um, so we've got a bunch of ambient light coming in. The window is open. We do not want that. Um, that does not help for a dramatic look. So we're gonna bring this window down. Okay. So that did a pretty good job of killing out some light. Um, we are now looking a lot better. We've got some pretty good negative fill there, um, but we wanna go ahead and add a little bit more. Um, and so often what people would use is <clears throat> duvetine. So this is pretty much a material um, black cloth that essentially allows zero light through. Um, and so what's really great about it is you can utilize that for killing out light in scenes, again, having a negative fill effect um, so preventing incoming light. So if you're trying to make a dark, edgy or moody look, um, but you're shooting in pure daylight, having duvetine or flags or something like that can help you kill out all that light and kind of control and shape your light again. Um, so this is a jerry-rigged version of duvetine here. Again, showing you guys how to do this practically and at home. There's no reason to go out and buy a bunch of gear when you can do it practically with the things at your house, in my opinion. It's all about learning how to save that money. Shouts to Lil Dicky. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hang our makeshift duvetine up here. And again, an item I like to use, purchase and use is thumbtacks. They have very, very minimal and limited damage, if at all, if you can really consider it damage. Um, it's a tiny little hole and so I love using these to kind of keep things held up. And so let's go ahead and take a look there. It's looking a lot, lot better. Um, the one thing I am noticing, unfortunately, so I'm gonna bring this light up a bit higher, is I have a cut in my lights. I don't know if you guys have noticed, um, there's a slit in the light, so it's escaping the dome. That's sealed up for you guys real, real quick. So now we've got that sealed up. Image is looking a bit better, but again, Shay, if you can kind of just pull out and show the whole area here, um, we're getting a ton of spill. Uh, we're getting a lot of spill. Um, so as again, kind of in those two other videos, I'm gonna bring in the grid, um, and we're going to control and kind of shape this light. I'll try not to hit your face here, Hannah. <laughs> wow, woo, I'm loving that. All right, so we're gonna turn down the ISO just a tad bit more. Um, so guys, this looks incredible. It looks really, really great. Um, again, this would be 
great for something. I hate using all these positive words because, you know, I'm saying it'd be great for like, hey, I got terminal cancer from smoking cigarettes or something like that, you know, like a very dark story. So this is just ever, ever, ever so subtle. But we're using this little key light here just to give a little more warmth to the image. Um, and again, just to add a little bit more to that main light source there. I'm going to go ahead and pump it up just a little bit more, add a little more daylight into there. We're looking, we're looking really good. Um, another thing, something else I might do, this isn't um, absolutely necessary or huge. Um, if you can watch your feet for me here, Hannah. So this right here, guys, um, as you can see, is a reflector. Um, so when you're doing a top-down uh, look, a reflector can be great um, if you're not seeing the bottom surface, obviously. Um, but a reflector can be great to add a secondary, bounce, uh, secondary light source. So this is going to act as a bounce. It's going to bounce the light um, and project it back onto her face. Um, so with Hannah sitting there looking forward, as you can see on the source, um, we're getting not a lot, but because it is top-down, we're getting a little bit of curvature or shadows right by her eyes there. So adding this bounce right here with the reflector is just going to allow us to eliminate that a bit more. So we'll go ahead and throw this in here and see what it looks like. Good. All right. So as we can see with it on in there and then with it out. And so they both have a nice look. Um, but for me personally, I actually like it with the reflector. Out, I think that has a much, much more uh, attractive look. Um, but yeah, that's it right there. Those are my uh, three favorite looks for a cinematic and dramatic lighting setup. So those are my three favorite setups for getting cinematic and dramatic interviews. Be sure to hit up that post notification. We got an incredible episode coming next week. You don't want to miss it. And be sure to like and subscribe. I know you did. I'll see y'all next week. Later.